Quentin Tarantino is quite a contentious filmmaker. He's built a career upon being a provocateur, with the most defining characteristics of his work being brutal violence, frequent use of the N-word, and the prominent feature of women's feet. I'm not going to get into the first two, but the third is what I'd like to talk about today. Do you remember this scene from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? So you used to make westerns at the ranch back in the old timey days? If so, it's probably because of how Tarantino has actress Margaret Qualley voyeuristically show off her bodily features, especially her feet. I'm going to analyze this scene by explaining the concept of the male gaze, and then show how Tarantino plays upon established conventions to tell a story. So what is the male gaze? The male gaze is a theory from feminist film scholar Laura Mulvey that uses psychoanalysis to explain how women are framed in movies by demonstrating the way the unconscious of patriarchal society is structured film form. Mulvey points out that this male gaze usually goes hand in hand with the fetishization of women on screen through scopophilia, or pleasure through looking. This is where the aforementioned scene comes into play. Previously, Brad Pitt's character, Cliff Booth, has been observing the young hippie Pussycat, played by Quali, when she finally waves him down. Booth talks to Pussycat through his car window, and in the reverse shot, his bodily language shows how he's in control of the frame, but also gesturing towards the empty seat. Pussycat then uses the car window to frame her face. Quali is very conventionally attractive, and her character will use this alongside other traits to try and solicit sex from Booth. In the next shot, we see that Pussycat has armpit hair, which ties into the idea of how the patriarchy has shaped the way symbols and features are perceived in films. Despite becoming more prevalent and socially acceptable in the present day, women's body hair has traditionally been viewed as unclean, and in this scene, it's meant to represent that something is off about Pussycat. It's worth noting, though, that some men do have a fetish for women's body hair. Pussycat then leans into the car, showing off more of her curves to the audience. This shot is a perfect representation of Mulvey's concept of women both being erotic objects for the characters and the audience. Traditionally, the woman displayed has functioned on two levels, as erotic object for the characters within the screen story, and as erotic object for the spectator within the auditorium, with the shifting tension between looks on either side of the screen. For instance, the device of the showgirl allows the two looks to be unified technically, without any apparent break in the diagis. A woman performs within the narrative, the gaze of the spectator, and that of the male characters in the film are neatly combined without breaking narrative verisimilitude. For a moment, the sexual impact of the performing woman takes the film into a no-man's land, outside its own time and space. This shot draws upon the audience's instinct to look at women voyeuristically, to place them into the perspective of Booth, who is also checking out Pussycat through his shades. Through dialogue, Booth learns that Pussycat and her friends live on the Span movie ranch, which to him is another red flag, as he knows it's abandoned. Disregarding this, he still decides to take her there anyways. The two drive off, and Pussycat puts her feet up on the dash, likely in an attempt to look cool while flirting. Tarantino has been accused, and not without valid reason, of having a foot fetish. While he might claim it as some sort of inside joke, or as an homage to his favorite directors, I only sort of believe him. The void in fetishization present in this scene, especially the feet stuff, is meant to call attention to how weird and gross the situation is. Once the two get on the highway, both characters play their hands. Pussycat offers Booth oral sex, and Booth realizes she's an underage hippie living in a commune, and refuses the offer. Pussycat tries to seduce Booth one last time by lying on his lap, and the scene ends. This scene uses the male gaze to make our protagonist and the audience feel uncomfortable and disgusted with what we're seeing on screen. I haven't talked much about Booth yet, but his character is also a product of the male gaze. A projection of what Tarantino and the public view as the peak of masculinity. Brad Pitt is an older, muscular, white man making him, like Quali, very conventionally attractive. In the film, Booth is driving a nice car, as he's the valet and stuntman for a famous actor. The nice car and humble job he has make him an ideal man to pussycat, a virtue which is expressed to the audience directly. Actors are phony. Oh. They just say lines that other people write and pretend to murder people on their 
stupid TV shows. Meanwhile, real people are being murdered every day in Vietnam. So in this scene, we have two opposite products of the same gaze interacting with each other. The simple message Tarantino is trying to convey in this scene, both textually and subtextually, is that older men exploiting younger women is gross. Tarantino is likely trying to reconcile his past actions and comments that enabled abuse, like his long career with Harvey Weinstein and his previous defenses of Roman Polanski, the latter being a character in this film. To atone for his previous sins, Tarantino uses the visual language of the male gaze to condemn the actions of these men and show them how they should ideally act. <laughs> 